So if getting lean is as simple as creating a calorie deficit, why aren't more people walking around at 10 to 15% body fat? Well, first off, simple doesn't mean easy. Second, when it comes to creating that calorie deficit, there's a lot of bad information out there and most people don't really have a clear idea how to do this properly. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you five things that most people get wrong when it comes to their calories and mistakes that you need to avoid to finally lose body fat. So let's dive right into it. The first mistake you need to avoid has to do with how you set your calories. What I've seen people do is they're gonna go online, they're gonna find a calculator, they're gonna plug in their stats, and then they're gonna calculate their resting metabolic rate. They take that number, reduce that by 500, and then set that as their daily calorie intake. This is not the correct way to determine your calorie deficit, and it will set you up with a very unsustainable diet. Your resting metabolic rate is just one out of four components of your metabolism. The other three are your physical activity, thermic effect of food, and non-exercise activity thermogenesis. These four components add up to something called your TDEE, total daily energy expenditure. Now that's the number that you need to figure out for yourself and then you reduce calories from there. For example, my resting metabolic rate is around 1800 calories per day. Now, if I consider that I'm also lifting weights four or five times per week, I'm walking eight to 10,000 steps per day, and with my general lifestyle, my estimated total daily energy expenditure is around 2800 calories per day. So if I wanted to enter a calorie deficit to lose about a pound or half a kilo of body fat per week, I would start by setting my calories between 22 and 2300 calories per day. Now, if I was making the mistake and I was looking at my resting metabolic rate, I would have to set my calories down to 1300 per day. And that would definitely lead to muscle loss. It would slow down my metabolism and I simply wouldn't be able to sustain it. Now, the second thing a lot of people get wrong is they don't realize that their calorie deficit is actually a moving target. So as you lose weight, your body will adapt and you will be burning less calories. And not everyone adapts the same way. As a coach, over the last eight years, I worked with many clients who had very adaptive metabolisms. So to continue losing fat, we sometimes had to go much lower in calories than was predicted by most calculators. So how much your metabolism adapts is something you will learn over time. And a lot of people don't realize this and then they get surprised when the same calorie intake doesn't work anymore. And this is why it's so important that you keep track of your food intake, as well as your metrics, such as your weekly weight averages, your waist size, and taking regular progress photos so then you can adjust your calories when you see that things aren't moving forward. And sometimes instead of just adjusting your diet, it also helps to add more steps and spend some calories by hitting that like button on my videos. That way you get to eat more food while still being in a calorie deficit. Now the third mistake that I see a lot is people eating back the calories they burned. And in theory, this sounds pretty reasonable. You track the calories you eat, then you track the calories you burn, and then on some of the days that you burnt more calories, you get to eat some of those back. And by default, a lot of the apps are actually set up like this. For example, MyFitnessPal will try to connect with your phone or connect with your fitness tracker, and then when you do a certain amount of steps or you do a workout, it will tell you that you've earned 500 or 700 more calories that day. The problem here is that this estimated amount of calories burnt is not very accurate. Researchers spend tens of thousands of dollars looking to accurately estimate energy expenditure, and this is not something we can reliably do with our basic devices and apps. And unfortunately, I see a lot of people who get stuck because they're eating back the calories suggested by the app. We simply cannot trust these algorithms yet. For now, my recommendation is that you ignore these suggestions, that you stick with your planned intake, and then you adjust that intake based on your weekly weight changes. Now, this brings me to the fourth mistake, which is trying to create a calorie deficit only through the diet versus only through exercise. And I often see these two extremes. The first group is forced to eat a very low calorie intake to lose any body fat because they're completely sedentary. And for this group, even a small slip up is enough to wipe out half their weekly calorie deficit. On the other extreme, we have the group that's essentially trying to out exercise a bad diet. They're lifting six days a week. They're doing six, seven intense cardio sessions. They're trying to burn as many calories as possible, but they're not paying any attention to their food intake. So they're essentially overeating all the time. You might be wondering, how is that even possible? They're not losing any weight with so much activity. Well, compare how many calories are in one slice of pizza, which you can eat in two minutes versus how many calories you burn in 45 minutes of doing cardio. 
it's depressing. And neither one of these groups are seeing results consistently and they're getting very frustrated. And instead of doing this, what I found works much better for myself and for my clients is to take a more middle ground approach where you are doing your three, four, five way training sessions per week. You're walking eight and 10,000 steps per day. You can scale that up to 15,000 steps per day if you want to, if you have the time. And then you're combining that with a moderate calorie deficit created through the diet. You're focused on eating healthy foods that keep you full. You're getting one gram of protein per pound of your target body weight. You're eating your fruits, your vegetables, you're drinking plenty of water. You're not doing anything extreme. Compare that to the group that's starving themselves because they refuse to increase their activity levels and then they're getting frustrated when they follow track or the group that's overdoing the cardio and burning out or getting injured or gaining a bunch of weight when for some reason they have to stop doing the cardio. All of what I'm suggesting is take a more balanced approach. Be more moderate with it. This allows for a low risk way to stay consistent. It's much more sustainable. So you're not only going to get to your goal, but you will also be able to keep it long term. Now, the fifth mistake a lot of people make is they overestimate how good their diet actually is. In a recent study, they asked 9,700 adults to assess their own diets and 85% of them inaccurately rated their own diet to be much healthier than it actually was. And that quality aside, we know from previous research that most people tend to underestimate their calorie intake. And sometimes this can be extra thousands of calories. And as a coach, I see this all the time. When I ask people who are struggling, how's their diet? I'll often get answers such as, oh, we eat pretty well, we cook at home, I try to get more vegetables. I'm eating protein with each meal. I'm trying to drink more water for the last couple of weeks. And all that is a good start, but none of those are objective measurements. As the saying goes, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. If you're stuck, guessing is not good enough. You need to be able to answer questions with actual data. How many grams of protein are you getting each day? Are there ups and downs? How many grams of fiber are you getting each day? What's your average intake? And then most importantly, how many calories are you eating per day and also on average per week, including the weekends? A lot of people who think they make great diet choices at the same time refuse to accurately track those diet choices using an app like MyFitnessPal. And the reality is a couple of snacks between meals, some extra indulgence on the weekends, and a couple of extra after work drinks are enough ambiguity to get you out of a calorie deficit. And these little mistakes all add up, you're suddenly not seeing progress and you get frustrated. Every ounce of effort you invest into improving your tracking and your accuracy with your diet will make a huge difference. So if you've been feeling stuck for the last couple of weeks, it's time to get that kitchen scale out and double down on some honest diet accountability. It's also gonna help you with that is making sure you hit that subscribe button below and your notifications by hitting the bell icon. Wanna work with me if you're looking for that coaching and that accountability, details on the description below. Also leaving another helpful video here for you at the end. So check out that video and I'm gonna see you right there.